Alright guys, how are we doing today? Super, thanks for asking. Alright, hopefully you guys are waking up a little bit. Um, welcome, my name is Mr. Dillman. Hi, Mr. Dillman. I'm Mr. Grove. I'm Mr. Nagel. Um, so we're going to be working with you guys for the for uh, this session and hopefully uh, have a little bit of fun. We're going to talk to you for about half an hour and then we're going to um, go into the lab and we're going to do an activity. So you guys are going to get to practice what we teach you. Uh, you probably noticed when you walked in that we have some containers here on the table in the front. Um, three uh, or four uh, containers obviously for holding drinks, but four very different things. Uh, which of these do you think is the cheapest? What do you think? Paper cup. Paper cup's the cheapest, cheapest one? Cheapest to make or cheapest to buy? Mm. Cheapest to make or cheapest to buy? Good question. Uh, so, it, you're, you're right, there's, there's two different answers to that. Um, but besides, besides the cost of, you know, out-of-pocket cost, which one of these do you think it's best for the environment? Aluminum can? Why is that? <laughs> Why is that? Is this one to one? You're a smart 10th grader. <laughs> uh, okay. Anybody else? Besides, really smart 10th grader. Besides this, which one of these is best for the environment? Paper cup. Paper cup? Why do you think that? Biodegradable. Okay. Made out of trees. All right. We'll look a little more at that later. Um, now, which one of these would you most want to use if you had the choice and they were the same, you know, they were all really good for the environment and they are all the same cost, which one of these would you want to use? Which is the most user friendly? The Nalgene. The Nalgene? It's got yeah. the highest amount of fluid ounces. Yeah, it's most yeah it holds the most. It's a tough question, you know, which one's the best? Because, what do you mean, which one's the best? Uh, are any of these sustainable? What is sustainable? What's sustainable? You guys don't know what sustainability is? Only 10th Only 10th grade. Grade. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, then. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Nagel, and he's going to talk to you about sustainability. Can anyone answer that question? What sustainability is? We don't know what it is. You guys don't know what sustainability means. It means it goes on forever. It's good. What's good? Sustainability is good. Sustainability is good? Why is it good? It goes down soon. Good. All right, well, so based on your uh, great answers, uh, sustainability essentially means meeting the needs of today without compromising uh, the ability of future generations to meet those same needs, meet their needs from the future. What does that mean? So say we all need to drink some water. We all need water to live, right? So the way we use our water today has to be appropriate so that we can have enough water, but also people in the future can have water, including not just people, but the planet. You know, animals, they need water, plants need water. Um, so living in a, a certain way today that will allow others to be able to live the same way in the future is essentially the idea of what sustainability is. Um, so the next slide. So what do you guys think it means to design? Create an original idea. Okay. What else? Draw something. All right. What else? Build something. Build something. Brainstorm. Oh, brainstorm. Brainstorm. <laughs> oh, brainstorm. I wonder what you're So, uh... <laughs> so four correct answers there. Yeah. So, what about... What about design has to do with sustainability? What do you think? Uh, how would you relate those two things? Yeah, right? you think about sustainability when you're designing something. Okay, all right. We can do that. What else can we do? It's a weird haircut. <laughs> cool. So, uh, design. Design is the realization and conceptualization of human uh, needs or desires. So. What do you guys think that means? It's kind of a lengthy. We base uh, turning the idea into something. Something. Okay. Well, so like I was saying earlier about water. So we all need water to live, right? That's a need of ours. We have to have water. So meeting that need in some way 
so it can be a design. So how we meet that. So right here we have four examples of designs, right? So we have four cups that allow us to meet our need, right? Um, then what's sustainable design? We kind of touched on this a bit. You guys have any more ideas on what it is? What sustainable design is? Designing with the future of planet Earth and the human race in mind. Okay. All right. So sustainable design requires the awareness of uh, short and long-term consequences of that design and how that's going to affect our environment. We need to also be sensitive to how the environment's going to be affected, how uh, this need is going to affect everything else, including ourselves. Right? So uh, in order to create a sustainable product, we have to think about the long term, we have to think about the short term, um, where the product's going to be in a week, in a day, in a month. Where's, where are these cups going to end up? Where's, where are they coming from? Right? These are all considerations we need to have when we're designing sustainably. Um, otherwise, it's not a good design. It's not going to stay around. The best designs are timeless. And they can, uh, they're for, they work for everyone. Um, so, so how do we create sustainable design? All right. So we need to find a balance between three factors. Yeah, we're going to call these the three E's, the triple bottom line today. Um, economy, ecology, and equity. So we need to figure out how we can balance money, environment, and social uh, equality. All right. So can this design, uh, is it, can we afford to do it? Can the world afford to do it? Are we going to deplete natural resources? And also, can all people have that design? Can all people use that product? Or is it just something that the top 1% can afford or, or something like that? Um, so going into these three, um, three topics, we'll start with, I believe, uh, what is that? Uh, we'll start with ecology. Um, so what do you guys think ecology is? You got any, does anyone know what ecology is? Study of Earth. Study of nature. Okay. Study of nature. So, how do you think ecology <coughs> relates to sustainable design? Everything we create directly has a effect on nature. Mm -hmm. Okay. And everything we create comes from nature, too. All right. So, everything that we need for our survival and well-being depends on either directly or indirectly on the natural environment. So, the Earth. It depends on everything we have here has come from the Earth. We didn't get it from space, and I didn't come down here and just phase in some weird thing. This all came from the Earth, and it's a modification of natural resources in order to meet a need, right? So, the next thing is economy. Everything, what do you guys think? You guys know what economy is? Well, money. Okay. And uh, so, any, anything we make, Plus money, but do you guys agree? Every single one of these products you have to buy, you have to just go out in the forest and find plastic cups growing on trees or aluminum cans on trees, right? You can find them on the ground next to trees. Okay, it would be nice. That's something we'll talk about. Um, so economy for anything that we make, we need to have some sort of money to get to uh, to get that. Um, it's not profitable. Why make it? Right? Right. I mean, everyone wants to be able to live and have what they need to live. And the last thing we have is social equity. Uh, does anyone know what that means? Works for everybody. Okay. Anything else? It's appealing to everybody. Okay. Yeah. So, social equity is the quality of being fair and impartial. So. Like Mr. Esposito said here, um, everyone should be able to use something. So when, when we decide something, it should be something that everyone has access to and everyone has equal access to. You know, people, we're all equal. We don't need, there shouldn't be things out there that separate other people out from others, from different groups, right? So in this idea, there shouldn't be a product, like we shouldn't make a cup out of gold and say that, because everyone can't afford a cup made out of gold, right? 
Do you have a cup, man, or a goal? You got two, huh? Three, two. Three, three, three. He's the one percent man. So, uh, all right. So when we're designing, everything has to be. Everyone has to be able to uh, have that, get that. Here's another example of this. These three E's that we just talked about. Um, these need to be able to balance. You see how this is kind of in like the recycling triangle around the earth. That's kind of the same shape idea. So each part of those, each three of these factors. It's a major portion of sustainable design. Um, so we'll switch over now. All right. So, now we talked a little bit about economics and everything like that. Let's go back to the roots here. What are these things made out of? Let's start with this plastic bottle here. What's this made out of? Plastic. Well, where does it come from? Polymer. Polyethylene terephthalate. But what makes that? Polymer. Base, right? Polymer. Petroleum. Petroleum. <laughs> All right. Where's petroleum come from? Around the dinosaurs. Around the dinosaurs, right? Fossil fuels. Correct. Same with this. Would you both, Would you all agree that this is made out of a plastic material also? A polymer? Yes. Yes. All right. Paper cup. Where's it come from? Trees. Trees. Trees, right? And you have to <coughs> down, obviously, there's a lot of refining it to get the product. Or recycled paper. Recycled paper. Very good. What about this? Aluminum. Aluminum, right? Where does this come from? The ground. The ground? What's, what, what do you harvest? What's the ore called? Boxite. Boxite, right? They're, they're There's a lot of energy that. to make this no can. Boxite. They're, they're, they're not going to know that. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to tell them that one. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so were these products designed sustainably? What do you guys think? What, what about this? Is this sustainable? It says like these caps are made out of this material, 30% less plastic. Sounds pretty good, right? You can twist the lid off, close it back up, you can use it more than like once maybe, maybe twice. What do you guys think? Sustainable? Not sustainable. Yeah. Nah? Nah. Nah. Alright. Nah. What about this bad boy? Yes. Yes, why? Yeah. Because you can constantly reuse it. Reuse it? Any other, any other people? About it? Why can't you re reuse the other one? Oh, sure you can, but after a while it's going to get off. And then with this, you're just like... You can throw that off. <laughs> you makes you a good farmer, though. You can try. You can probably melt it. But if he can't break it, none of you can break it. Exactly. I'm the world's strongest man. Of anyway. So, after a while, these kind of get looking really nasty, and they get moldy and everything. All right. What about this? Is this sustainably designed? What do you guys think? No. Trees grow, actually. Trees grow, but the problem is, if you need paper cups, let's say you cut down a tree every year. And it takes 20 years for these trees to mature so you can cut down another one. Is that sustainable? Every year you need a new one, but only every 20 years you have a new tree. Is that sustainable? You're using a of Exactly. So hard. What if you're uh, making paper cups out of waste from other wood processing? Uh, out of recycling? Well, taking the waste from, say, making lumber, using that to make the paper for we'll the paper cups. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. What about this? You guys think this is sustainable? Depends. Depends on what? If it's recycled or recycled material. Or it's made out of recycled material, right? All right. It's recycled. So, well, let's talk a little bit about life cycles here. How can we change the length of the life cycle of one of these products here? For instance, cans, bottles, all redeemables. Only a, a few states actually have a refundable statement on the back one for five cents, ten cents, or fifteen cents, depending on how big the bottle is. There's 39 states out there that do not even use a deposit on any of these. So do you think if we change it so the whole nation was operating on a five cent deposit on these, we'd be more inclined to start trying to recycle more instead of just throwing these away into garbage cans? Yep. Can anybody think of any other methods we could use to make these life cycles a little bit longer, a little bit different? Make sure they're made out of recycled materials. Make sure they're made out of recycled materials. Very good answer. All right, so let's let's move on to recyclable materials and recycling in general. Plastic. Does anybody know anything about plastic and how it recycles? No. Okay. You have to melt it down. Melt it down. All right. So when you melt this down, do you think you can make another bottle of equal value, same size, everything, out of the same plastic you shred it up out of reused, recycled material? No. The way that plastics works is that you'll never be able to make a product of equal value to it. You could add new plastics that you made in your lab out of your new uh, 
fossil fuels and everything like that, and add it to this to make something that looks pretty similar to this. But you're still adding new plastic along with this. This could be recycled materials. I don't even know. Does it say anything on here about being recycled? No. no. Mr. Capozzi, you let me down. Anyways, so you would have, if you wanted to make another one of these, you could shred this up, add new polymers, ta-da, you have a new container. What's the problem with that? You're adding, you're adding more. What about this? Is this really good for recycling? Why not? Better than, uh, than plastic. Yeah. Why is this bad? Anybody else besides uh, Mr. Scott over here? Start fires. <laughs> they start fires? That's a good thing. Start thing start if you campfires. Need a spot. I mean, it's reusing it. Anybody else? Well, the paper. No? The trees don't go fast enough. The trees don't go fast enough. All right, we'll move on. How about, how about recycling these, these containers? Is it easy to recycle these? Yeah. Yes, you're saving a ton of energy if you just recycle one of these. You're saving up to, I believe, 93% of the energy it costs to <coughs> ore this out of the ground and refine it into a can if you just recycle it. And the beauty of these are you could recycle this into a can over and over and over again of same or equal value, or greater value, I'm sorry. So you guys see what I'm trying to get out of here, right? So let's move on here to... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Tillman. To our little uh, triple bottom line here. Let's apply some of these principles that we've already been talking about with Mr. Nagel to this plastic bottle. Economically, is this economically friendly? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely say so. It doesn't really break like glass containers or anything like that. It's pretty cheap, light for the most part. Environmentally, do you think this is uh, environmentally friendly? No. What's that? No. No, no bueno? All right, I'd agree with you on that one. I think these are very bad for the environment. Socially, what do you guys think? Somebody from this row. I mean, people can afford them, generally. Very cheap, usually, right? You go down to Walmart and buy your big giant box of water, and it's pretty cheap. Portable water where there isn't a water source. So, yes, this is very good for people that can't be really available. People down in uh, Pennsylvania that are hydrofracking right now, and they don't have water sources. This is get shipped into them every single day, or they have a big water container shipped into them. What about where it goes when you're done with it? We're going to get that. Where does it go and throw it away? Yeah, okay, you can throw this away. Let's just throw this away. We'll, we'll come back to it. Yeah, I missed that twice. Two lessons in a row I missed. Oh, wow. All right, anyways. So let's move on to our paper container here. What do you guys think about this? Is this an economically friendly? Sure. Yeah, for the most part, right? They're pretty cheap, easy to make for the most part. Environmental, what do you guys think? Better. Better than plastic? Mm -hmm. Why? Biodegradable. Uh, Biodegradable. Uh, natural resources, like renewable natural resources. Takes up a lot of resources. Somewhat renewable, right? More renewable than Congress. Exactly. Socially, what do you guys think about these? Creates a lot of jobs out there. You, ever, you guys ever watch that show like Swamp Loggers on Discovery? Those guys are logging all those trees, creating a lot of jobs, cutting all those trees down to make these little paper cups. Plants making these cups, what do you guys think? Socially acceptable for the most part? Mm. All right. And aluminum. How do you guys feel about economically? Is this economically friendly? <coughs> mm -hmm. Once it's recycled, right? Not when you're first making it. When you're first making it, it costs a ton of money. You have to go all the way down to Africa or India and you have to uh, mine this all out of the ground. It goes through a whole lot of refining processes and then you're finally left with this aluminum can. So. I would say economically, not really so. But if it's recycled, yeah, I'd say so. Environmentally, what do you guys think? Yeah, it's good. When you recycle this, you can make a product of equal value or greater value. So you're not losing anything. You're not having to add more polymers into a product to make it. Socially, what do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, think about it. There's a lot of people that have jobs like this. There might be some of you in this classroom that have parents that work over at the um, aluminum plant. This is really good for uh, economies. Think about it. Melting these bad boys down, selling them, we'll making new products out of them. All right. Ready to move on? Oh, no. Okay, so he throw these all away in the garbage. Whatever. So where do they go? It's three now, I missed. They go away. They just go away, right? Well, landfills is probably one of the best places for them to go, in my opinion. Now, if you look at this little chart we have going on here, you notice the paper represents 15% of landfills. Now, after what we've already talked about, what could we just do since we've been talking to change this 15% is take it right out of landfills. Recycling. Recycling. 
Now, what about organics? Think about organic material. It could be anything from your your lawn that you're, you put, take all your lawn clippings, your leaves, and you throw them away. The town comes and picks them up. Uh, your leftover vegetables after you're done with dinner. Anything like that. That's 23% of the landfill. Does anybody have any idea of what you could do besides throwing them away into your garbage? Make a landfill in your backyard. Compost. Make a landfill in your backyard, either also known as a compost. But you don't put trash in there, obviously. You just put organic material that can be composted. Well, I thought paper and organics were supposed to break down and biodegrade. How come they don't? That's a great question. The number one reason is because they do not have the principles or the requirements to actually break down. They need sunlight, water, and oxygen. But when you take material and you throw it up underground and you're like, all right, this is going to decompose now. Is that going to actually work without those three things? You don't have sunlight. You don't have water getting to it. You might have some oxygen, but it's not really flowing here, like air moving through it. So no, it's just going to sit there for hundreds of years. People think it's going to break down, but it won't. Timber is another great example of things that just break down. Okay. So here's another example of where things go. This is a terrible thing. This is an ocean gyre. If you notice here, it's this big, giant blob of trash in the middle of the ocean. And we have them going on all around our planet right now. We've got one in the Atlantic Pacific, uh, yeah, the Indian Ocean. And this, we're just going to talk about the Pacific Ocean here. What happens is there's a big, giant current that swirls it around. All your garbage that you throw out of your car on the side of the road, or towns are dumping in the ocean, or cargo ships are losing their cargo. And it's just all ending up in this big, giant, massive pile of plastic in the middle of the ocean. And this is terrible for us, isn't it? Do you guys like having plastic in your oceans washing up on your beaches? Not very equitable. All right, so let's ask these three questions then. Which one of these containers is the best for the environment? Let's pretend that there's a plastic in it. Aluminum. Aluminum? Why is that? You can recycle it over and over and over and over and over. You could do this paper also, couldn't you? By the well, which one of these is the worst? This one? No. This one? Yeah. What? Because? Which product has the longest life cycle out of these four? Nalgene. What's that? Nalgene. Nalgene? Why do you say that? Because you can use it over and over again. You can wash it. And... What about this aluminum can? If it's recycled. It could have potentially the same, if not longer, life cycle as this. Mm -hmm. As long as people are cycling. That's true. All right. Well, let's head on over to Mr. Dillon. He's going to talk to you guys about what we're going to be doing. So, Mr. Nagel and Mr. Grove talked to you guys a lot about materials and a lot about these, uh, you know, these containers we have in front of us. We learned about the triple bottom line, which is a new way to look at cost not just an economic sense, but also on the same level, economy, equity, and environment. So, <clears throat> uh, we're all here for Youth Technology Day, and one of the most fundamental ideas of technology is the idea of design. Uh, you guys talked a bit about that, but uh, we're gonna, you know, we're, we're all designers now. Everybody in this room is a designer. So, in talking about sustainable design, what makes one way of holding a drink a better better than another way of holding a drink. It depends a lot on what you, uh, you know, what you want. Do you want it to hold a real high volume because that's going to be this is going to be better than this. Um, but we're talking today about sustainability and sustainable design. So there's more to it than just what the material is made out of. Uh, let's talk about some other things that make a design sustainable or more sustainable than what exists already. Uh, we talked a little bit about um, you know, about product life cycles and about single use. These products here are all pretty much designed for single use. Um, even though you can recycle this aluminum can again and again and again, the product life cycle of this can is single use. You're not going to reuse that can unless you recycle it. That costs energy and that's a new life cycle. So this is designed to be recycled. This not so much. It's got a wax coating on it. It's not just paper. It's got ink. So when you go to recycle this, you get all these impurities that you can't, you know, that's, that's why you can't just use the paper again. And that's why you can't just use the plastic again and get something the same value. Because you're always going to end up with impurities that make it not quite as good. Uh, so they weren't, you know, they're designed to be recycled, but not to their complete value. That's, that's thinking about product life cycles while you're designing. 
So what are some other ways that, you know, some other design considerations that uh, we can think about while we're doing our activity? How about waste? Um, we want to minimize waste and not just scrap material that's left over afterwards. But think about, think about waste in a new way. Um, if you're using material from right down the road, uh, is that better or worse than using material from the other side of the world? Same material. Might, you might even be cheaper on the other side of the world. I don't know how that works, but say, say it's cheaper for you to use something from China than the very same thing from right down the road. Which is better? What do you think, John? Same thing from right down the road. Right down the road? Why is that better? Because you don't have to transport it and use energy that way. There you go. So you're not just talking about using the material that you're purchasing. You're talking about how much time, energy, resources it's going to take to take that material from around the world and bring it to you. If it's cheaper from across the world, it makes you wonder a couple of things. How are they getting? How are they, you know, how, where are they making up this cost savings? A lot of times what we run into is that things from, you know, things from other countries are cheaper because their workers don't get paid as much or because their businesses don't have to clean up after themselves. So uh, those are things to think about when you're asking yourself, is this equitable? Is this fair? Is this uh, you know, environmentally friendly? Usually the best material you can use if you're buying new material is the local one. Um, even better is a reused one because it doesn't have to be remade, it doesn't have to be recycled, it's just repurposed. So, we're going to take these ideas that all, the, all three of us have been talking to you about, and we're going to move out into the lab in a few minutes. When you walked in, we passed around a packet to you. 